Thanks. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Maudlon, uh, for hosting this. Thanks, everyone, for attending. Uh, that light is pretty strong. I'm going to get need a minute to get used to it. So I realize I have the sort of the dubious honor of being the, the last presenter. Uh, so I'll try to make this interesting, keep it short. Um, my name is, is Samir Kher, of course, and uh, I'm, the, I'm an R&D manager within the ANSYS organization. Um, I manage the development, research and development for Simplore, which is our uh, sort of physical system simulation tool, but maybe more on that uh, in a couple of slides. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we've done so far uh, for FMI. Of course, as, as Jeff mentioned, we're sort of newcomers. Uh, we haven't been heavily involved in the community so far, but we see a lot of value. Our customers see a lot of value, and you really want to get involved in it um, uh, in, in several ways. Uh, the, the material that's available on, on the FMI website has really helped us a lot uh, to get up to speed, and we'd like to contribute as well going forward to the development of the standard. Okay, so in terms of an outline of my presentation, um, I wanted to just kind of give you an overview of specifically just the tools that, that uh, the FMI technology touches today, not going over all of the ANSYS simulation tools. So specifically, the, the tools are in the system and embedded space. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the current support that we have uh, for FMI at ANSYS, and then our plans for FMI support in the future. And also, I had just a few thoughts about things that may already be considered in, in FMI. I'm, I'm a, uh, clearly not totally in, in sync with what, what else is being discussed, but uh, just some of the requirements that we think would be useful to consider, given some of the unique requirements we have. And then uh, I'll finish up with some conclusions. OK, so uh, there are essentially three products today at ANSYS that are uh, in, in some way compliant or working with FMI. Um, with the recent acquisition of, uh, well, not recent anymore, but with the acquisition of SRL technologies, we, we have a couple of embedded software products. The first is SCADE Suite, uh, which, is, you know, which, is a so which is a tool used for designing and developing control software, uh, embedded control software. Uh, and specifically, it's, it's used for mission-critical applications such as aerospace or, you know, and uh, rail uh, and so on today. Uh, you know, in terms of functionality and capabilities, there's a, there's a nice front-end, a, a GUI, uh, that's, you know, that can be used for doing the model-based software engineering, software development. Um, in terms of the, um, the features kind of behind the scenes, that can be used to verify the software that gets generated or created. There's model checking. There's also some formal verification, uh, debugging, of course, of source code, stepping through code, uh, analyzing code in different ways. Um, and then, of course, there's this um, rapid prototyping capability, which I'll show a little bit in, in, in a short video that I have. Essentially, it allows the customer to quickly build a sort of a, a driver model, a model that he can use to interact with his software. Uh, and on the on the back end, of course, the 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 core technology is in the code generation and optimization. Uh, and Skate Suite today supports uh, code generation for C and Ada. And then we've got certification kits for uh, for a bunch of different uh, uh, applications, uh, kind of in industry standards, such as the two six two six two, for example. Uh, the second product that's touched by FMI, also in the embedded software space, is the skate display, which is our uh, offering for embedded displays. So you, you can use it to design things like the heads-up display or even the car, uh, you know, the, the panel. For some of the new cars are all electronic, so you can design that using uh, skate display. It's, it's very similar in functionality, so it's got the intermediate layer where you do verification. Again, it's all the front end is GUI-based and uh, model-based software engineering. And then on the back end, again, there's generation, code generation, optimization, and then also there, there are certification kits, and there's some compliance with certain uh, platforms. And then finally, the, the area that I'm most uh, closely connected with, Simplor, which, which is a multi-domain system simulator, but, but it has a, a strong focus today on electrical and electronics. That's where our uh, strength is. So it's, it's a maybe a little bit different from the, the strength that some of the other products here today presented. Uh, so this is sort of like a typical application uh, in Simplora where you have, a, I guess, a brushless DC motor with hysteresis control. So there are these control pieces. Uh, there are the electrical pieces where I think most of our uh, technology is focused. Uh, those are IGBTs that we, we extract from 
companies like uh, Infineon automatically, you know, very automatically and uh, create very detailed models. Um, and then the motor that you see in this case is actually uh, a motor that's designed inside Maxwell, which is our finite element tool. Uh, so it's a, it's a co-simulation link in this case that you can just drag and drop the Maxwell project and, and place it here and you get the, uh, get the co-simulation model. We also invest heavily in, in ROMs as I'll, I'll talk a little bit, reduced order models I'll talk in a bit. Uh, so in terms of functionality on the Simplora side, uh, we've adopted so far uh, an, an, uh, also a standard modeling language called VHDLMS. That's more in the IEEE electrical engineering domain. Uh, it does have capabilities in, uh, for multiple physics, for mechanical and fluids as well, but its focus is on electrical and electronics as well as digital. Uh, we see it as, a, as very complementary to Modelica. It's, it's, it's a good synergy. It's not, I don't see much of an overlap. Additionally, SPICE and P-SPICE, which are uh, kind of well-known and well-used in the electrical world. And then C, C++, of course, you can, you know, we've got interfaces, you can write models in C, C++ and, and bring them in. Um, e additionally, then, the, the functionality we focus on is, is the multiple levels of abstraction. So you can take a model, model it at any level of detail that you need. So, of course, behavioral modeling, the easy kind of equations that you just type in to structural modeling where you use different uh, uh, different models to combine and, and build a more complex, sophisticated model, reuse it. Uh, as well as we like to, uh, you know, we want to augment these capabilities with links to other tools. And specifically here, we, we, we do work to improve capabilities for ROM, uh, reduced order modeling, which is, in a way, exporting the model from, from 3D tools or from, from other tools. Uh, and, and we try to be, try to adopt standards there as well, as I'll mention in a little bit. Uh, of course, as with other tools, we've got a rich library of models, many thousands. Uh, I think with a lot of depth on the electronics, things like IGBTs and power MOSFETs, but also some, some basic models in, in most of the other domains. And, and then we're inherently mixed signal, that the tool is inherently mixed signal. By that I mean there is a, a strong digital solver, very tightly connected to an analog solver. VHDL has, has huge digital requirements, as you can imagine, uh, FPGAs and things like that, complex, uh, microprocessors can be actually included in the simulation. And so it's important to get the interaction between the analog and digital just right so that it's, it's efficient and accurate. I thought I'd just spend a couple of quick slides on just VHDLMS and, and the ROM capability uh, before diving into FMI. Uh, so VHDLMS is a IEEE standard which stands for the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. Uh, it stands for a, recursive acronym, the V has got another acronym, uh, very high speed integrated circuit, hardware description language with analog and mixed signal extensions. Uh, and, and the origin was in uh, VHDL on this side, which is the uh, kind of discrete event simulation language uh, for, for digital systems. And then the extension was added back in 99 uh, and has been continuously revised since then. So it's got Sim very similar to Modelica in terms of uh, developing models. You can write simultaneous equations and you can write functions and, uh, uh, and, and reuse, reuse models and things like that as well as hierarchy. So the most recent version is 2007. There's another version that, that's being uh, discussed right now that will hopefully be released in, this, in, this, uh, in the next two or three years. Okay, um, as I mentioned, the other area that we invest quite a bit on is on ROM and co-simulation, and specifically, I wanted to talk a little bit about ROM. Co-simulation, I think, is probably familiar to most people. Uh, on, the, on the reduced order model techniques that, that we use, we try to make them as standard as possible, and, and the idea here is to take a 3D, complex 3D uh, uh, model uh, component and build a, a model into Simplora, into a system tool that runs in a fraction of the time. And uh, kind of we've developed, without lo loss, of uh, accuracy, just based on information such as you're not interested in all of the information, perhaps you want in information at certain points, things like that. Uh, and I think we've, we're pretty strong in terms of the, of the electronics, again, electrical and electronics. So you can see uh, the links that we have, for example, with Maxwell, uh, and as well as some of the other ANSYS products like Q3D, SI Wave, HFSS, in order to build these uh, S-parameter-based uh, state space models. We've started adding capabilities for thermal uh, with links to IcePack and links to Fluent, as well as some, some capabilities to link with mechanical. In a lot of these cases, we're using a sort of a state space format that's pretty, pretty generic if, if, you, if you look at it. All right, okay. 
Moving on to just a, a quick overview of the, the current capabilities that we have for FMI. Like I said, we're, we're starting out this year. Um, so in SCADE Suite and SCADE Display, the, the first two products I talked about, we have the ability to export uh, FMUs, uh, embedded software FMUs. Uh, and, and we've got two modes supported, uh, the kind of the, the standard mode, which is the black box mode, which is independent then of the SCADE tool. You don't need the SCADE tool. You don't need the license anymore. Uh, and then the white box, which is actually more like the FMI co simulation, where you can actually launch the simulation, and that's going to link into the, to the SCADE GUI, bring that up, and, and you can view results, pause, and, and debug the code, and, and so on. So that's on the display side. And on the simpler side, our first release here is going to be to support model import. Uh, and again, it's, it's similar to what the other, other folks have shown. It's just one click. You say add FMU component, point to the FMU component, and then Simplor takes, takes care of everything else behind the scenes, creates a component for you that you can uh, wire up. If, if there's a symbol that it can find, it'll use it. If not, you can provide a symbol, a picture uh, that, that shows up. The symbol is created automatically in terms of the pins. Uh, and then we've got our own proprietary C interface that sort of uh, it plugs into. OK. Uh, I just had a, a fairly short demo. Uh, this was an example that, that we created uh, working together with the SCADE team and with, with some uh, kind of uh, customer requirements. Uh, it's a fairly simple example of a sort of a conventional car. You've got, you know, you've got these pieces at the, at the bottom here designed in, you can see my mouse, yeah. In, in simpler, in VHD LMS, you've got, a, you've got the battery. These are all hierarchical structural models. You can push in and see a lot more detail. There is the, the alternator. There is a, there's a, mach, a, a combustion engine and a motor. Um, and, and you've got the wheels and the, and, the, and the car structure. And then you've got these three pieces that are actually FMIs generated from the skate tools. The first is a, a control panel, which is like uh, the, the rapid prototype I was talking about. That's going to be our driver model that, that we interact with. Uh, then there's the, the cruise control algorithm itself, which is the software that's sort of behind the scenes. You create the FMU, plug it in, and, and you don't, don't see anything else after that unless you chose white box simulation. And then finally, there's the dashboard, which is the embedded display, which is what would eventually get put onto the car uh, or to the, the display platform. So I had a short video. So these were the different components again. These are the different components just zoomed in. That's the software part. That's the display part designed in, in SCADE display. And that's the, that's the control panel. So I had a quick video. I didn't, I didn't feel brave enough to run a, a live demo. So uh, just going to run the simulation. So as you can see, the, the person who set this up is running the play button in Simplor. And then that automatically brings up these two panels, which are embedded software panels. And then you can interact with them. You see him accelerating. You can see the updates in the in the display element, you see updates in the plots in, in Simplor as well. Uh, in a moment, I think he's going to set set the cruise speed. That's going to that's going to set, and then he's going to lower the acceleration. And all of this is uh, kind of interactive, dynamic. Uh, all of these tools are, are running simultaneously. And then you can hit the brake, and then uh, obviously the car slows down. And the advantage here is, of course, these pieces would be the pieces, the, the code that would actually get embedded at the end uh, on the target platform. OK? This will stop. All right. OK, I just had a couple more slides, so I think I should be good. Uh, in terms of plans for FMI support, we're really excited by the standard. Uh, it, it shows us a lot of uh, opportunities. One thing that we want to start trying to do is to try to uh, support you know, exporting VHD LMS. We, we have a similar flow as, as with Modelic and with other tools to you know, do code generation with VHD LMS. And, and we think that would be pretty unique to be able to export VHD LMS and have that plug into other tools. Of course, that needs, needs a fair amount of work because there's a lot more digital content there. Um, we're also looking at FMI co simulation and adding that support. Uh, in terms of requirements, I know that some of these are maybe covered in, in the release candidate 2.0. I haven't had a chance to review it in much detail yet. but. The first thing there was support for partial derivatives that would really help, particularly in, in the cases where we're doing 3D co-simulation with some of the 3D products, where we don't have the luxury of uh, solving them too many times. We want to be able to get that information through. Uh, support for A-causal uh, interfaces uh, I think would be really nice, especially if we could connect up 
you know, FMI models with, with VHD LMS models, with SPICE models. Uh, I think that would be really uh, compelling. Uh, and support for composite types. I, I don't know if, if there is plans to add those, but this is basically vectors and things like that uh, in the interface. OK, in conclusion, uh, the upcoming release, which is called Release 15, which releases in December of this year uh, of ANSYS products, is going to include the FMI support that I just outlined, uh, the model export for the SCADE tools, and, and model import for Simplorer. And, and we definitely think this is a, a really key uh, standard and a key development for ANSYS, so we're going to be continuing to invest in this as we go forward. Uh, and clearly we've seen, we're still learning, our customers are learning, it, it has the potential to be a true simulation tool agnostic uh, model, modeling and model exchange standard, so I think that's, that's driving a lot of our customers towards it. And uh, you know, we, we see that the current version is already usable. Uh, I just want to make that clear, the current version of FMI is already uh, usable. Uh, but we do want it to continue to evolve uh, as it goes forward. That was all, thank you.